whenever I play the Chiefs, uh, I always feel like a little bit of a extra aggression towards me. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, I get tackled, uh, I think it was last year, and um, Angus Tava was like, yeah, stay down, boy. You know, there are obviously things you can keep working on while you're in isolation, but also skills and everything like that. Um, and just sort of getting out there with your mates is, well, the last part's impossible, but it's it's tougher in general, right? Yeah, no, the everything in, um, like, skills-wise and everything was a little hard. Like, um, my oldest boy is only, like, six, seven years old. Yeah. And I'm trying to, like, get him to pass to me. It's, like, <laughs> catching out all over the place. So, like, oh, okay, um, we'll try something else. <laughs> but um, apart from the skills, uh, everything else has been going pretty well. Like, I feel I'm pretty good, Nick. And, yeah, just can't really, can't wait to get on the field with um, boys again. Yeah. And now that you finally have sort of a, a start date for this new competition and presumably mm. a start date for when you're training, that must be, you know, it's the light at the end of the tunnel. That must be pretty exciting. Yeah, no, real excited. You know, we've had Zoom calls like throughout the weeks um, with the team and, and just seeing them, their faces and um, all the chat, just having a good laugh. Like you kind of miss that, having that at, um, back in the like environment. So looking forward yeah. to getting back together again. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, for you personally, you know, after last year where you, you missed out on that World Cup squad, um, it's been going pretty well for you this year for the Blues as, and, you know, for the team as well. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, what's it called? For the team, I think it was uh, a great job from management and the leaders in the team with um, dealing with uh, the whole connection side of rugby, like off the field. Uh, in the past, uh, I, I don't know. I only just came to the Blues last year, but yeah. um, and we were pretty tight last year. But this year was like a whole different vibe than last year. Like um, everyone's been real close. And after those two wins in South Africa, I think um, from there yeah. on it was just like everyone was able to really get the ball rolling together and um, work for each other. So yeah, been pretty happy with this year. And you guys had two pretty tough first up games against you know the Crusaders and Chiefs. Unfairly, to be fair, you, you probably had a few people saying, oh, you know, same old blues kind of thing. But <laughs> when you have those two tough games straight away, uh, it's going to be pretty hard for any team to go, you know, two out of two or even one out of two, right? Yeah, no, it's um, those two teams, like this whole competition with um, just New Zealand derbies, that's what everyone wants to see. So uh, hopefully this time around um, we can be ready to perform like we did coming off before the whole lockdown. But, um, yeah, I, I, see, I just see a whole big difference than last year to this year, like um, beating the Stormers, being, you know, undefeated until they met us was yeah. a pretty good thing to achieve. And um, going back to back of South Africa hasn't been done in a long time for the Blues. And um, yeah. just seeing good things all around uh, this year, like on and off the field. and. Hopefully we can bring back some old, um, like times of old when Auckland used to be real dominant. We can bring that back, hopefully. Yeah. And I think your your first match is that up against the Hurricanes? Um, hopefully Bowden's back and it'll probably bring a little bit more hunger for them to try and beat us with Bowden <laughs> yeah. back in the mix. But we'll see how that goes. Yeah. And with that, and of course, the fact that you guys did beat them, they're going to be uh, they're going to be the ones gunning for blood in that match, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> they definitely don't want to go two losses against us. And to take a loss at home, uh, I think it's been a while since the Blues beat Hurricanes down there. But um, yeah, they'll definitely be going for us round one. And looking at your performances personally, the while, while you never want to you know, miss out on international selection or selection at any level, the beauty and I guess the curse of it is that you get that full preseason and before Super Rugby. Yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. Like, got into good shape um, during the preseason and was able to, like, learn everything with the team. Like, it was kind of hard for me to come from 2018 to 19 to the Blues and not do the preseason and yeah. kind of get a feel for everything. So I was glad to um, do that uh, in the last year for the 2020 season. And, um, yeah, I felt a lot better um, this season than I did last season. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, especially that 2018 
I mean, that was probably your first year of full-time professional rugby and it was a mm. full year, right? Like that was a, a stacked year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was nonstop, like um, not being uh, on a contract, you know, like I had like a lot of um, small niggles here and there, like when I was uh, injury replacement in the Chiefs, but I wouldn't talk about it because like I knew, you know, if they find out like I got a bung ankle, they're going to be like, oh, just rest it off. And then, I'll probably end up falling out of um, the picture and not getting paid. So I was just like, oh, if I got a sore ankle, I better just ice it up for an hour or something, like <laughs> make sure yeah. I'm ready to go next week because I'm, I'm not going to try and, you know, give up this whole um, week to week kind of payments and stuff. Like I need to extend my <laughs> little contracts every every two weeks. So For you, that whole season, that 2018, probably – while it was obviously incredibly stressful, it also every week when you got the call that you were going to play a game or that you were needed for the Chiefs or, you know, then later on that the All Blacks needed you, you must have been like, well, they must be kidding every time you got that call. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I was like, every game and every week that was going by, all I was thinking was like, um, like I had this, it was a silly mentality at the time. Like I would always talk to the coach, uh, to the trainers and the players be like, oh, boys, uh, yeah, I'm off next week. Or, like, pretty much have, like, a farewell every two weeks with my <laughs> flatmates. And be like, yeah, boys, this is my last one. Have a few, like, um, uh, cover sesh or, like, um, have, a, like, a big-ass feed. And then next week, they're like, oh, boys, I'm actually staying for another two weeks. And like, oh, uh, saying goodbye <laughs> to you, like, every weekend. <laughs> but then um, getting extended. But, um, yeah, it was pretty crazy, like, getting extended every every like every couple of weeks but um i think it was when aiden ross got injured against wellington that's when they just told me like bring your whole family down you're here for the rest of the season and yeah um yeah i was pretty pretty happy to bring my family down and yeah i was really happy that they got to come down and join me and how did that initial call up to the chiefs actually come about um so at the end of 2017 might have 10 um we had a pretty good year. That was Tom Coventry's first year uh, uh, coaching for North Harbour. Yeah, and um, he he was he was the one who brought me back from 2016. So 2016, I broke my leg, and I was uh, about to you know hang up the boots, and I was pretty much done. I thought I'll just work security. That was it for me. But uh, Tom Coventry came at the end of 2016, uh, getting ready for 2017. Uh, and he found me and told me, um, I want to sign you for uh, 2017. And I was thinking, oh, I've got a broken leg, you know. Um, I don't know if I want to play anymore. And he's like, no, 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 I've seen what you could do. I want you to come back and I'll get you fixed up. So he got me in touch with Matt Wenham. He's the um, physio for North Harbour now. And he pretty much turned me around turned me around from the, like a broken leg. that was meant to be like, I think, nine, ten months Um uh, recovery it turned it into like six, seven months, and I was running again. And uh, unfortunately, 2017, like we we did pretty well, but I, I never got picked up for any contract. No one was looking yeah. at me. And um, Tom Coventry was uh, as a friend of uh, Colin Cooper, who just yeah. started coaching the yeah, the Chiefs, and um, it was almost a favor. Like uh, Tom Coventry called up. Uh, Colin Cooper on my behalf and was like, I got this kid, um, he's a prop. I just want you to have a look at him. And Colin Cooper already had all his props, you know, he had um, Optimoli, Molly, um, Kane Hames, uh, Mitch Graham, like he had all these <laughs> new seats that was already sorted. But, uh, <clears throat> he, he just told um, Colin Cooper, like as a favor to him, just take him for preseason and see what you think. So I signed a contract for like, I think just for the, uh, preseason for the yeah. Chiefs, and then during that preseason, um, I think like four or five props got injured, like just in that preseason. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, uh, Colin Cooper asked, "Like, um, you want to stick around? We, we might uh, need you to play a game like soon." And from there on, I just thought, "Oh, okay, um, yeah, sure." And then <laughs> once I played my first game, um, I pretty much was there for the whole season. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it must have been hard as well. Leaving the Chiefs, having you know, having sort of made it into the All Blacks and known how much progress you'd made with that Super Rugby side. Yeah, for sure. But um, I loved my time down there. I loved the the culture, the the, the teammates. Like um, I'll never forget like what 
all of them stuff for me and um but like like I said, like um I would have never been in the Chiefs if it wasn't for Tom's call to Colin Cooper. So yeah. Um loyalty is a huge thing for me. Like um I'll never forget what North Harbour's done for me too. So like um leaving North Harbour is something I would probably never do either. So uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's the beauty of um you know, you've you've built those relationships with those with the guys at the Chiefs and, and the, the fun thing I guess about being in that front row is when you go up against, you know, teammates, former teammates of yours, as you know that actually in those scrums, you are going to be literally going head to head pretty much, right? Mm. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> whenever, you, whenever I play the Chiefs, uh, I always feel like a little bit of a, um, uh, well, how would you say it? Like a little bit extra aggression towards me. <laughs> <laughs> like like I, I get tackled, I think it was last year, and um Angus Tav, I was like, yeah, stay down, boy. But he's obviously joking because he always jokes around like that, even when I was in the team. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good uh, little, you know, competitiveness that um, that it brings up when you leave a team and you play them again. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, you said that, you know, you didn't really see rugby as a career option for you. What, um, what I mean, why not? Oh, like... <clears throat> I guess it was um, a lot to do with like uh, when I was younger playing rugby, uh, I would always make teams, but um, it was more of a, like, I'd rather like, I think at Wesley College starting off when I was playing rugby, wake up Saturday mornings and um, everyone would be like strapping up or like getting really heavy breakfast and be like, come on Carl, we got to go. But I'll be in the TV lounge watching like cartoons and I'm like, yeah. I just leave you. I don't want to do this. Like <laughs> I'm eating cereal, watching cartoons, thinking I don't want to play today. I just want to relax kind of thing. So I've, I've always been a <coughs> pretty chill, <coughs> pretty chill dude. And um, I wasn't really interested. Like at the time when I was growing up, I was just like, I just wanted to play video games, watch cartoons and, you know, just kind of kid stuff. Like I wasn't really into um, getting competitive with sport but um, yeah it, it, like even when I came back to rugby in 2015 like it was more just to you know lose weight and stuff so I tried to play off my brothers they were playing in the reserves at uh, Takapuna Rugby Club <coughs> and I showed up there at, um, at, at the reserves training and then um, the reserves uh, coach came up and told me he's like oh you're not allowed to play with us I was like <coughs> Oh, I'm just here to play with my brothers. Like, the the prems coach uh, wants you in the prems. Like, <laughs> you can't play with us. I was like, oh, that sucks. So I don't even get to play with my brothers at um, <laughs> their club rugby. And then uh, going from the prems uh, with Tekka ended up in Harbour. So, and then from that point on, it just all rolled up, rolled on from there. When you told your wife that you had this contract in France and that she was happy to, she was invited to come along, she must have been uh, pretty ecstatic with that as well. Yeah, no, she she was happy. Like um, we were we were all excited. Like me, her, and my little boy about um, the change because you know I wasn't really up to much here. I was just you know working security during the week and then bouncing in the weekends to you know for that little extra to you know try and get a date night or something. <laughs> like yeah. I wasn't making much money, so I just thought, oh, we could go over there and you know do pretty well and you know um, get to. Uh, it was a huge change for us because we got over there and they were paying us money um, when they gave us like a car and a house and all the money was just pretty much like to pocket. It wasn't that much, but it was like none of it was for rent or gas or um, driving. It was all just basically for food. Yeah. So we were like eating like kings every day. I was like, <laughs> oh, burgers, steaks. Like my wife was baking every day and I wasn't used to that because I was used to being at home in our one bedroom shack with frozen chicken every like week like that's how we were eating but then when we got to france it was a huge culture shock for us like yeah um seeing how like rugby players did like and i, I wasn't really a full-time professional so going there i was like man i'm the man <laughs> I'm, I'm living like a king over here wow, right? it's just what a professional is like but yeah it was it was a pretty good thing like um i always give props to daniel halangahu for taking me there because before I went to France, I wasn't really a scrummager. Like, I got picked up for North Harbour because of my running ability. I went to France, learned how to scrum, lost my running ability, and came <laughs> back. <laughs> it 
it almost changed my whole back because like um, that whole season, well, we would have like a scrum sesh like twice a week, and it was just like forty five minutes of just non stop um, <laughs> live scrummaging. Yeah, and I used to come home and like pour ice on the floor and like lie on it because like, <laughs> I couldn't move. <laughs> like it was crazy how what what I went through at that time, but like um, seeing it now, like it's almost you know conditioned my back for like scrummaging for like long periods of times so at any time like even if I'm like completely naked or in dead like on the field from running you put me in the scrum I'm able to do what I did like from the first scrum to the last one I pretty much used to you know getting in that position I- I'd almost rather be in the scrum than like doing other stuff <laughs> <laughs> was that just their their style of play or was that also because you know, in France, you tend to have some pretty uh, turgid weather conditions as well. I think it was uh, almost like a, I don't know, how would you say, like a pride thing too, because they, they would scrum and like the hookers don't even hook the ball. Like they just sit there and just wait till someone collapses. <laughs> and like <laughs> we'll just hit the scrum and be like there for like almost a minute until someone like folds and falls over so you can get a penalty. Like it was like that for every scrum throughout the whole game. Like you're not, you're not there to like, you know, scrum quick ball get it out like get the backs rolling but it's just scrum and they wait for the penalty <laughs> yeah so it was like uh, yeah i think it was like a, a huge pride thing and um showing what your pack can do and it was kind of a good thing too because almost mentally whoever had the sc- stronger scrum almost won the game as well like almost every time almost yeah but um yeah it's a huge difference coming down here where it's like balls just in and out in and out now and then go for a scrum penalty but um, yeah, huge difference. <laughs> you know, people talk about your sort of fairy tale kind of movement from not having a super contract to, to the All Blacks, but really mm. going from, I mean, barely even a club player to a Harbour wider training squad member to having a full time contract in Narbonne, that's mm. that's just as incredible, right? In terms of that that scope. Oh yeah, that was crazy. Like, because. Um, Everyone around me, like my family, my friends, they didn't really, they knew that I wasn't, a, um, I wasn't trying to aspire to, you know, do anything with rugby um, yeah. before North Harbour picked me up and going to France. So like when I was in France, everyone was like, oh, so you're doing all, all right in rugby. And um, I, I didn't know that it was like um, second of and like it wasn't too serious, but it was, it was pretty like um, up there, but everyone started thinking that, oh, maybe you should come back and, like, try to do more. But um, I was thinking to myself, nah, I think I'm not that good. Like, I was actually waiting for um, a call from Tonga, like, yeah. to play for Tonga. Oh, wow. And because uh, uh, when I was in France, um, we played, like, teams like Perpignan, and that's where Tavita Mailau, ex-Blues yeah. player, Tavita Mailau was playing. And he came and asked me, and he's like, bro, would you want to play for Tonga? And I was like, oh, yeah, like, because I had nothing at the time. I was like, bro, I'll, I'll be keen as to play with Tonga. And then that call never came. And then all of a sudden, like three years later, I'm getting a call from Darren Shannon, like, oh, we have an injury in the All Blacks, you know. We need you to come in next week. I was like thinking, oh, I was, uh, I was thinking that playing for the Chiefs, I would have had a better chance to play for Tonga. Like, <laughs> it was pretty crazy to get a call from the All Blacks. <laughs> and looking at sort of how, how last year went for you, um, you know, when you first broke into the All Blacks, it was a case of, you know, you showing what you had for the Chiefs. And, and I think everyone was absolutely amazed at that scrummaging that, you, you know, you'd obviously owned when you were in France. Um, and you, you came in for that first game against France as well and uh, did a pretty good number on that French scrum. Oh, yeah, that was... Uh, it was basically because, like, I never played with, you know, the best of the best in a whole country kind of thing. like. Um, when we packed down for their scrum, like uh, I think I had like Scott Barrett and uh, who was the number six, Liam. Um, yeah, I had those guys behind me, and man, uh, all I did was just fall into the scrum, and I just felt all the like push coming from my back, and I was just like, like almost running for it because I couldn't even hold them back because they were pushing so hard, like. Um, yeah, it was pr- basically all the guys behind me because um, I didn't really need to do anything except channel what they gave me. Yeah, was that yeah. um, 
was it reassuring for you that that was pretty much your first act of the game and you come on and you're like, okay, it's a scrum. I know I can do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I was pretty happy. Like um, almost every debut I've made was uh, scrums. Yeah. So like for North Harbour, I scrummed and it, I got penalised. <laughs> Uh, for my Chiefs debut, it was against the Blues. We got a scrum penalty, and um, I was happy with that. Like we won that game, and then with the Blues, it was um, I can't remember who I debuted against, but um, yeah, <clears throat> I jumped in after a scrum. Like I, I didn't start that game either. And with the All Blacks, it was off the bench and jumping into a scrum. I was just thought like oh, I've done this plenty of times before. Yeah, uh, this is this is what I'm made for. So. I was pretty happy to go in at that time, like, and yeah, pretty much leave my mark, I guess. <clears throat> and then last year, I think you were pretty open about it. I can't remember if Steve mentioned it as well, that it was probably your running game that let you down in terms of, you know, staying around mm. that All Blacks environment. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've always been like a, um, a believer in like, you know, uh, core roles being like the most important thing for a player like and uh, I always knew that like my core role was um, scrummaging you know line outs more which was something that I always pride myself on but like um, I didn't really see the importance of like having you know players doing other players jobs like I, 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 I'm not that talented you know and you can't have like a a four pack of all number sevens or like, you know, kind of thing. Like you got to have like guys that do their job, which is why I, I saw why Owen Franks is one of the best tie heads we ever had was like his core roles. He did perfectly. Anything else was just a bonus. But like when you're asking guys to do, you know, things that are outside of your core role, it's like, it shouldn't be an importance, but I guess that's what coaches were looking for at the time. And I tried, like, uh, I, I try to, you know, um, please coaches with uh, trying to do things that they want me to do. But um, I'll always, you know, um, be grateful for, you know, uh, Mike Cron and Steve Hansen for bringing me in. But like, uh, they just had a different thing in mind at the time. So I had no problem with, you know, um, not making the All Blacks at the time because it was like, oh, they know what they're looking for. They know what they're doing. So, um, you know, that's none of my business. So, <laughs> yeah. I guess it's the what happens with the um, how the game evolves like all the time. Um, they want to try and get one up on it, but um, yeah, uh, I don't know how it goes with other countries like South Africa champions. You know, I, I don't know if they are the most <laughs> mobile props that you're yeah. going to see in the game. They just do their job, but like I don't know. Um, yeah, it's but like I think just like New Zealand was ahead of the game from every other country before. It's just something in the works to try and get ahead of it again, like in the future. So, um, yeah, I guess it's a, a future thing for props to be like that. But uh, I guess I'm just more of an old school. Um, <laughs> yeah. About that. Is it something that you really enjoy? Do you, do you love getting sort of stuck in and, and, I mean, demolishing the other team, basically? Oh, yeah. I've, like, been, I've been a prop, like, pretty much my whole life. and. Um, I've always loved, like, you know, sticking my head in a, in like a place where, like, I just feel like a force where I just want to try and, you know, get as low as I can and like try and stop it. It always like excites me to try and stop things that are moving forward. And um, yeah, we've been pretty lucky to do that as a Blues pack, like this whole year. Like everyone been trying to, you know, get through our malls, but we've been able to stop it and. I've been loving, you know, throwing my head in those places and um, getting into the scrums. Yeah, I've just loved doing that my whole career pretty much. <laughs> yeah, really appreciate you um, yeah, taking a bit of time out of your day to have a chat with me. And that's, um, no, it's hopefully the uh, season kicks off sooner rather than later, obviously. Mm. Oh, no worries. Thanks for having me, mate.